What if I told you that on every turn that you take in combat, you could take not one, but two actions? What do you mean? I'm talking about your bonus action. Oh, that's not the same thing. Come on. Maybe it's not the same thing, but listen to the video because we're about to teach you how to break the action economy and make your bonus actions feel more like an action. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another J&J &J Tabletop video. My name is Jake, and with me, as always, is Josh. And as the name suggests, the bonus action is a bonus action i know i know that's kind of a bit on the nose but really if you start thinking about it that way it makes a lot of sense and break the action economy which is exactly what this entire series is about so josh what are the kinds of things that you look to break the action economy with as a bonus action the types of things that i look for would be any sort of spell or feature or anything along those lines like abilities that would allow you to use your bonus action to do something that would typically cost an action. The first way that I would suggest would, would be finding a way to weaponize your bonus action. So the first example that comes to mind would be two weapon fighting, which is literally just you have two weapons, you know, one in each of your hands, and you're using your attack, your main action to attack, and your bonus action you're using to make an offhand attack. This is going to be really great in situations where you might be trying to deal like sneak attack damage as a rogue, maybe you missed your first attack, or maybe you have something like Hunter's Mark or Hex, where you're going to be dealing extra damage every time you hit it, in which case you use that as your bonus action the first time, and then every time you touch that creature, you're dealing your weapon damage plus Hunter's Mark or Hex or whatever. Um, so it could really, really start to add up very quickly and really the magical equivalent of that really is kind of like spiritual weapon and clerics are kind of really incredible at doing this because they literally just have it's not even concentration spell they just have this other weapon they can move around the battlefield and just smack people with their spell casting attack mod <laughs> like it's incredible the other thing that's interesting to discuss with the bonus action is probably the spell that i i've cited as i think is in so many ways the most powerful spell in the game and that's healing word which kind of does the opposite so like if you're a healer and you're going to use your bonus action to heal with healing word you can still use your main action to whether you're going to attack something or you know cast a damage dealing cantrip something like that mm. it's you're kind of doing both at the same time which just like having two turns in one it's like it's like having action surge it's breaking the game it's broken in a good way. it's broken <laughs> 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 some spells are obviously like bonus actions like like healing word but even if you have something that's not a bonus action uh you could break the action economy with quicken spell right oh, you have some it. experience with that don't you i love me some quicken spell <laughs> <laughs> you could do so many things with this you can cast two cantrips if you want to just basically action surge in that way uh you could cast a cantrip plus you know disintegrate or fireball or whatever it is because you can't break the leveled spell rule but to me the perfect example of this is if you're a martial character right so i'm playing veil and ancient relics and hokey religions and the next time he gets a chance to take a feat i'm thinking about elven accuracy because he's an elven archer but i have to think about meta magic adapt and use quicken spell because he has devil sight so he can see in darkness but darkness is an action. And do I want to not attack with Veil, which that's one of the primary ways he interacts in combat is dealing damage with that bow. But if I quicken it, I can cast darkness as a bonus action and then still make the regular attack in the same turn. And if I action surge, then it's just really broken turn. <laughs> but oh that's, that's one of those things that really it just seems to have much more value in the hands of someone whose action is typically counted on to deal damage like a fighter would be. So it's one of those things that just, it breaks rules. You break the economy. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Just make it a monopoly on the action economy. That's what I like to call it. Just own it. Just, just a, a business tycoon. Just Yeah, you're building your houses. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you start putting those hotels up. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're pass and go. You're still collecting $200. You, you yeah. can't do anything. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Josh, I know in the movement video, we talked about these two classes in particular. 
uh, but because everything they do that's really cool there is bonus actions. I mean, what about monks and rogues? Because they're at it again, aren't they? Monks and rogues, like, as much as everyone wants to hate on monks for whatever reason, I guess I think it's power creep, you know, after a certain level, but w whatever. Like, we, we already kind of went over some of this in the movement video where monks and rogues can do a lot of things that normally just cost full action. And that's, like, tremendously powerful. They could dash, they could dodge, they can disengage, and rogues, at least, can hide as a bonus action. So these are all things that, like, completely change the way that you interact with, with combat in this game, right? Like, do you need to attack someone and then fly across the battlefield? Well, you could dash, and yeah, you're going to take an opportunity attack, but maybe you just need to get your regular movement across the battlefield. Okay, so disengage as a bonus action. You could still do it. Now you're not going to take any opportunity attacks. It's insane. I, I mean, you, you could literally, on your turn, you could hide and set yourself up for a sneak attack or, you know, do your sneak attack and then go back to hiding and you avoid other attacks. Yeah, it's that bad. really leans into the rogue fantasy so much because you and I have had conversations privately, I think. I don't know if we've done this on a video yet, but like, there's something about the rogue that feels a little off to me and like it's not something they typically can generate their own advantage. Hmm. But if you think about it, if you're using the terrain and thinking like a rogue to be able to hide, it's like, oh, yeah, I can as a bonus action. <laughs> and that's kind of awesome. Yeah, I, I think of it like if you've ever seen The Patriot uh, with Mel Gibson from oh, like this is such a good idea. Yep. Oh, yep, <laughs> yep. It's so good. It doesn't feel like it's that old, but I guess the, it's this movie is probably very old for most of our viewer base. Twenty-two <laughs> years old. At this point. It came out in 2000. <laughs> There's a scene in The Patriot very early on in the movie where Mel Gibson's character essentially sets up an ambush and he puts like different weapons at different spots, but he's not like he's not like posted up in a, at a spot like making multiple attacks like a fighter would. He hides, gets in position, makes his attack, runs to the next spot, hides, makes his other attack, and, it, and it, it makes it seem like they're being ambushed by, like, a huge group, when in reality it's Mel Gibson and then, like, two of his children. That, like... is, that is the <laughs> perfect example of what fighting a rogue should feel like. <laughs> oh, no, no, there's, like, seven of them. It's like, no. <laughs> it's just one of them. <laughs> He's just everywhere. One other thing, kind of, we kind of already mentioned it as far as, like, the weaponized section, but, like, rogues... Use your two weapon fighting, grab a second dagger just in case you miss your first attack, take your other dagger out, try to get your sneak attack. Unless it's more valuable to hide in that moment, which a lot of the time it is. And that's one of the thing, like as a party, you're kind of relying on that consistent big hit from the rogue. So easily something to consider and keep in your back pocket if you can. Maybe not literally, because that might hurt if you sit down. Yeah, keep, yeah. keep it sheathed if it's in I think your back I, pocket. I think we made our point. We already mentioned quick and spell, and we already mentioned healing words, but there are some other options that uh, casters have for bonus actions. Um, you want to go over a couple of those? Well, yeah. I mean, it's me, so I have to first mention Misty Step. It's just so cool. You're just you're here, and now you're over there, thirty feet away. Bonus action. <laughs> yep. I'm good. Like it's just so <laughs> useful. So you, you you get to do the Sesame Street, then you turn. You just yeah. Far. <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly, exactly. And then uh typically they're really only paladin spells, although I think like Hex uh, the Hexblade Warlock has their expanded spell list has like the smite spells. Not the feature themselves, but the spells, blinding smite, all those things. Mm. Banishing smite. That's a really strong one. It's a high level one, but it's like casting banishment with an attack, which is just awesome. But <laughs> Obviously, there are a ton more options out there. So if you know some more bonus action spells that are worth mentioning, let us know in the comments section because uh, you could teach us something. We like that. Yeah, I like learning. I mean, it, it keeps me quick on my feet, you know? You can break the action economy with some feats. What are some of your favorites? I'll tell you what, Jake. I will go through my favorite list of feats. And you know what? You don't even have to subscribe to our OnlyFans to see this list of feats. So starting off, I would say probably Great Weapon Master. Basically, you score a crit or uh, reduce a creature to zero hit points with the weapon attack. You get to make another weapon attack as a bonus action. That goes back to the first thing we said about weaponizing your bonus action. Aside from that, it's another one that, that we mentioned before, right? Metamagic Adept, Quicken Spell, 
it just speaks for itself. And if so it doesn't, good. then listen to Jake talk all about it a few moments ago. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back. It's uh, fine. You can watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard me talk about Polar Master a lot because I played a Polar Master. Basically, you make an attack with the Polar, you get to make another attack. It only does a D4, but you can use it with Great Weapon Master. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, it's um, not about the D4. It's about the plus 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are some of my top three. Do you have uh, you have some more? I do. Um, one of them is a little niche, but if you're a character that's built around poison, whether you're a rogue that wants to put poison and just really even dig deep into that, or maybe you're the alchemist artificer or whatever, you just, you're just into poison. If you take the poison feat, you can apply poison as a bonus action instead of an action kind of right in theme with everything we're talking about but as a caster actually one of my favorite feats is it's almost like a must-have telekinetic as a bonus action you can shove a creature five feet now that might not seem all that big or all that strong off the top of uh just hearing it however number one casters often don't use their bonus actions as often as i would say like a rogue or a fighter or you know whatever's out there with the martial characters but casters often create zones that do things like cause difficult terrain deal damage like wall of fire and it's like oh now it comes to the ogre from the wall of fire oh i made it it's like <laughs> just gonna push you right back in there there you go damaged again <laughs> like or oh, if you finally the scrawny like caster finally crawls out of the entangle spell and <laughs> It's like you push him right back in and have to yeah, make that you... save again. Like there's just so many stupid things you can do with just five foot push that yeah. I think can get underrated. And it seems so small, but in, in the hands of a caster, that's very, very, very strong or potentially very strong. And then of course, because Misty Step, they touched. Take that. You get Misty Step. <laughs> Best bonus yep. action. I love it. <laughs> I think the only other one I could think of would be Shield Master. Not necessarily on par with any of the other ones on there, but you, you do get to uh, shove a creature uh, within five feet of you with your shield as a bonus action. And hey, be paired with same... a caster, yeah. Exactly, for the same reasons that Jake just mentioned. You know, like, maybe that creature just got out of the, the spike growth, just got out of it, and you're like, you, you <laughs> slash him and then pop him back into it. You know, like, it, or maybe it, it, the creature's ten feet away from something, and you both team up and push him. <laughs> it yeah, can be, there's a lot of little <laughs> fun things that you can do with that. <laughs> so these are all the feats that we were kicking around together. If you have any that you think we missed that work well for your, like your bonus action or just something that you love, let us know in the comments. There's a lot that you could do with the bonus action if you're doing it right. You could be attacking with your bonus action. You could be casting spells. You could be healing. You could be doing more damage. You could be using your bonus action as a movement or hiding. There's plenty of things. So if you want to make the most out of the action economy, learn to make the most out of your bonus action. We have plenty more videos about the action economy, and we have more to come. So I believe we're going to be talking about reactions next. We'll have to see how you guys react to that first. Mm, yeah, but if you could just react to this video with a thumbs up, uh, maybe a subscribe, maybe hit the bell, maybe leave a comment. I don't know. Maybe go on Discord and, and be friends with us over there too. But we do videos every week. We hope that you enjoyed this. And until next time, adios. Goodbye. Goodbye.